In today's video, we're taking a quick look at the Xtool P2. Check it out. The Xtool P2 is a 55 watt desktop CO2 laser cutter designed for speed, precision, and versatility. Using its laser, the P2 can cut through materials like 20mm of clear acrylic and up to 18mm of black walnut in just a single pass. It's got a top speed of 600 millisecond, a dual camera system, automatic range finding, and a whole bunch of optional attachments. This makes it Xtool's flagship laser engraver, but is it any good? I've been using the P2 for around about 6 months now, so I've got a pretty good idea of how well it works, what I like and what I don't like, but before we get into those things, I do just want to quickly point out, Xtool have also released the P2S, which is just an upgraded version of this P2. There's a few design changes, a few little improvements and tweaks, but ultimately it's very similar to the P2. For the purposes of today's video, I am just going to be talking about the P2 and not the P2S, so with that said, let's take a look at what you get in the box. The P2 is an absolute unit and it comes in this giant box. As well as being really big, it's also really heavy, so I'd definitely recommend having someone help you just move the box to where you want it to be and also to unpackage the box. I will say the P2 is extremely well packaged, which is definitely something you expect when you're paying either up to or over £5,000 for this machine. There's definitely a lot of thought that's gone into the packaging, which has kept it nice and safe throughout its transport. All of the parts and peripherals that you're going to need are actually all enclosed inside of the laser engraver, so when you take off the outer packaging, you just simply open up the lid and then you'll find access to everything that you need. Inside the P2, you'll find a whole bunch of things. At the top, there's the self-check guide, the quick start guide, the main instructions manual along with some starting materials like this craft card and baser wood. You'll also find a funnel, a power cable, a USB A to C cable, a screwdriver with some material clamps, some screws, allen keys, the extractor ducting and a duct clip, and this bottle of antifreeze. Once you've got everything out of the engraver, it's time to get started with the setup, and if you've made it this far, then the setup's actually quite simple. I think the hardest part of this whole process is actually lifting the P2 up to take the big box from underneath it. Following the quick start guide, you'll see you need to remove a couple of tabs and screws, and these things are just there just to help the laser engraver in transit. With those taken out, you'll see these little green tabs that indicate that there's some screws to remove, and you need to take these screws out to remove the back plate. With those screws out, the back plate just pops off, revealing the laser tube in, and it's at this point you want to inspect that glass tube in, just to ensure that there's no visible signs of any damage, anything like cracks or little dinks in that tube in. You need to do this before you move on to the next step. The next step involves adding a measured amount of purified water into the P2's water reservoir, and you'll notice that in the whole unboxing process, I never mentioned any purified water, and that's because you'll need to go and purchase this for yourself. For this, I just jumped on Amazon and had some delivered the next day. If you happen to live next to a hardware store or a garage or potentially maybe something like Tesco's, did Tesco sell purified water? If you live near any of those things, those places should also have it. If in doubt though, Amazon's got it. With your water now acquired, you continue following the setup guide, which will just guide you through the process of mixing the water and antifreeze. The guide will indicate how much water and antifreeze you need to mix, if you need to mix them, and this is going to be different for everyone depending on the area that you're in, and also where your P2 is being stored. This actually might sound a bit difficult and complicated, but genuinely it's just follow the guide, pour the measured amount in, and you're good to go. The process involves pouring about half the measurement into the P2 and then turning it on, then after a few minutes it's a case of turning the P2 off, pouring the rest in, and then repeating the process. Now that your water's done, you can turn the P2 back off, pop the back plate back on, and then just insert those screws that you initially took out. My P2 came bundled with the fire suppression system, and also the basic smoke purifier, so if you have these, you can also add these on now. Some quick specs for the P2 then. It features a usable bed size of approximately 26 by 12 inches, and supports both slats and the honeycomb panel. It's got a small LED screen which shows job time, the temperature, and also if the auto lock is engaged. By default, when a job starts, the auto lock engages so that the lid can't be opened whenever a job's running. The engraver features a 145 CFM exhaust fan, which can be pumped straight outside, or you can opt to make use of an inline fan and have it vent elsewhere, or you can attach a smoke purifier. There's an emergency stop button, a rear power switch, a physical job start button, which also doubles up as a pause button, and if you double press it, it will also repeat whatever the last job was. 
This button also has a coloured LED ring around it which just indicates its state. The machine also has Wi-Fi connectivity as well as an Ethernet port and a USB-C port for physical connection. There are also some additional ports on the machine that are used for the fire suppression system and some of the additional accessories that you can get with this machine but I'm not showcasing those in this video. And that's pretty much it for the physical side of things. The next thing we're going to be doing is the software and for this you'll need to download the Xtool Creative Space which is available for free directly at their website. The Creative Space is going to be the main bit of software that you use to interact with the engraver. It'll also be the main software that you use for actually designing and mocking up all of the different designs that you want to engrave or cut out. The user interface is fairly straightforward and after you've had a go at a couple of projects you'll easily familiarise yourself with all the different icons and where things are. In the creative space there's actually a bunch of beginner guides that you can use to help you get started and what's cool about the creative space is the fact that you can actually use other people's designs, you can access them directly in this bit of software and just load their templates and load their files and make use of those in your own designs. If you like to be mobile and you don't want to be tied to your laptop or your desktop, there is also a mobile version of the Creative Space which you can download and use on your phones or your tablets. It gives you access to the same functionality but I personally prefer using the mouse and keyboard and doing all of my designing on the desktop. If using the Creative Space isn't your cup of tea, you do have the option of using Lightburn. However, if you do use Lightburn with this engraver, some of the main features and functionalities don't work as they're not supported in Lightburn. Things like the camera and the auto ranging, which are pretty much the main features of the P2. Although you can't use these features, you can manually adjust and manually set those settings, so you can use Lightburn to do everything, you're just losing those key features. In this particular video, I'm not delving too deep into projects and actually using the creative space, but if there's something that you'd like to see or something that you want to know, maybe in a future video, then do let me know in the comments. Some of the projects that I've been working on recently are things like designing custom keychains, custom fobs, coasters, a bit of acrylic work, and the biggest project that I'm doing at the minute is actually designing and setting up some of these little tambourines for one of my friend's weddings. Having a large desktop engraver makes projects like these mini tambourines an absolute breeze to run through. You can have multiple of them on the bed at the same time and it's made easier by things like the batch production feature. Two of my favourite features with the P2 are ones that I've actually spoken about a couple of times in this video already and it's the dual camera system and the auto ranging. The camera system is comprised of dual 16 megapixel cameras. Both of the cameras are used with accurate positioning, batch processing and real time previews. The real time previews are available to view inside of the creative space and this gives you a nice still image of what's currently on the bed. The first camera captures a whole image of the bed and the second camera can give you a more high definition image of an individual item. For me I really love being able to actually see what's on the bed and actually be able to put my design on top of the item. I can kind of visualise what it's going to look like and I can really accurately line something up or put something really small in a set location. The LiDAR ranging system is the other feature I really like. What this one does is it makes use of the LiDAR and allows it to automatically calculate the thickness of a material. So when you place something on the bed, the LiDAR can automatically scan it and it can accurately work out how thick it is. Being able to do this and being able to do it accurately really does save you a lot of time. It also saves you grabbing out your calipers. Inside of the creative space, Xtool also provides you with a bunch of materials and a bunch of presets for different thicknesses. So when you combine these preset materials, the auto ranging and also the camera system, it makes it a really simplistic process for even beginners. Although the P2 does work really well, there's definitely some room for improvements. One of the improvements I'd like to see would be with the camera feed. With the camera feed, it'd be cool if you could toggle on a live feed and you could use this live feed just to do some micro adjustments and move things around and this saves you constantly having to take preview images and use the cameras to just take still images. Using that live feed, you'd be able to see the item moving around in the creative space and it just really helps with those micro adjustments. You could probably also do some other cool things. You could do like a time lapse or you could just preview the camera. Although I don't really know how enjoyable that would be to watch the tool head moving backwards and forwards and a laser so maybe not that. <laughs> the next improvement that I'd like to see would be to have the P2 detect any connected smoke purifiers. Doing this the P2 could automatically turn on the smoke purifier if it's a particularly smoky material or it could automatically adjust or turn it down based on how much smoke is being generated. I've actually automated this whole process for myself by making use of Home Assistant. 
Using Home Assistant, I can have my smoke purifier automatically turn on whenever it detects that the P2 is running. So it saves me just manually doing that and just makes my life a lot easier. With my time with the P2, I did also find one small bug. When you double press the start button to repeat the last job, the loading bar doesn't actually show you the remaining time, it just stays on the one bar flashing and it will do this until it completes. So the current bug doesn't actually show you the remaining time when it should. The final improvement that I'd like to see with the P2 would be to upgrade the internal extractors. The base extractor that's on it is quite weak and you probably do want to make it a little bit more powerful. And this has kind of been voided by the whole P2S because the P2S does have upgraded extractors. So if you want an upgraded external extractor, then uh, check out the P2S. For me, the P2 meets my needs. It offers a versatile range of features that work with various materials, and there's plenty of attachment options if you wanted to expand its capabilities further. It's definitely going to be a machine that sticks around in my workshop for a while. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick look at the Xtool P2. Even with all the points that I've mentioned today, this is only just scratching the surface of the features and functionality that this machine has, so I will be back with some other videos, just showcasing these a little bit more. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.